that, but just hope that your references should be cool or vegetarian vegan that on ours if you want should just we you know. Um so you should have vegetarian stuff, but not necessarily vegan stuff. Okay. Welcome to Drupal Nights by BioRaft. Tonight we have Mickey Metz talking about VoIP Drupal. Great. Hello, VoIP Drupal. Well, I'm going to start by getting the clicker. <laughs> that always helps. Um, I have a presentation prepared, but everyone can feel free to jump in and ask a question at any time they have one. Um, I guess we'll start with this is a VoIP Drupal experience because there are so many things you can do with VoIP Drupal that it truly is an experience. Once you open it up, it's kind of like a rabbit hole. And um, just to mention one thing, VoIP Drupal is a framework. It's a series of modules that work with Drupal, but it's also a framework, so you could literally run a fleet of trucks with it and no one would know you had a website. So I'd like to give some props out to uh, the people who have created it and are still working on it diligently every day. Um, it's mainly um, done by Leo Bird and a group of developers that he works with. It's from the MIT um, Civic Media Center. And that's right over here in Cambridge. So sometimes we just go over there and see what he's up to, see if we can help. And uh, I met him just by finding out that he was part of Drupal on Drupal.org. And I happened to live near MIT, so I just kind of attached myself to the project. That was a few years ago, and I'm still here. The reason I'm here is there's 5.5 billion people with regular cell phones. Only 1.5 billion with smartphones. So there's a whole world out there of people that could be using VoIP Drupal to use the internet through their regular little clamshell cell phone. And I think that's a huge incentive for us to reach people who are just not connected as we are. There's some potential VoIP Drupal applications that we've thought of. And as we reach out to more and more people, more people think of more use cases, which is awesome. Um, you could use it for a call center. You could use it for story recording and playback, like um, oral histories that are being taken by um, the PBS stations. And uh, documentaries are using this footage and audio to create powerful moving stories of people back over centuries of their uh, ancestry. Audio tours. There is a, an audio tour, I believe, in Dorchester called My Dot, where kids have put together little sound recordings for what is going on in the, each area of town as it's displayed on a map. So you can click on the map and hear you know, a little story of what's going on in there. Um, interactive community radio programs where people can call in. And uh, call blasting out emergency announcements, which I think is one of the most important uses of VoIP Drupal. Um, there are many areas where disasters happen and people don't have smartphones. So if they were all connected through a Drupal website and a VoIP Drupal phone number, you could send a text message to thousands, hundreds of thousands of people to potentially save lives, property, whatever. Hey, there's very few requirements to using it. If you have a basic Drupal site up and running, you're pretty much all set. Um, you would need to be the admin of that site so that you could install the Drupal modules. Um, you'd need a, a VoIP account. Now, I've listed number four here as tropo.com. The reason I list tropo is because it's a, it's a free account for developers. I've had an account with them for several years, and I use it for all my testing, and um, it's really wonderful. They've never nagged me or bothered me, and they've provided a very solid service. 
before we get into the Drupal modules, I'm going to go back a slide. <laughs> and I'd like to try a little experiment. Um, does, does everyone here in the room have a phone with sure. them? All right. Let me just. Uh, This is a website called uh, Drupal Roommates. It's one of my pet projects to uh, enable people who do Drupal and travel all over the world to easily find a place to stay with other Drupal people so they don't have to talk about other things. <laughs> <That's wonderful>. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, um, you wake up in the middle of the night, you want to know how to do this view thing or right, something, right, you know, right. you can't ask a doctor or a lawyer. <laughs> exactly. Keep it together. So uh, this is my site, and I test VoIP Drupal on it also. You can see on the right-hand side, there's a bunch of phone numbers. I'd like to ask you guys for, um, could someone give me a three-digit number? Just a three-digit number. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. All right, one, two, three. Um, can you dial the Boston number or any of the numbers? And when it asks you for the conference room, dial one, two, three. The Boston number is 939 9835. Okay, so I'm dialing the number, and I'm dialing one, two, three. And it's asking me if I'll accept the number, one, two, three. If it's correct, and I press one. It says I'm joining the conference room. And hello, everyone who has joined the conference room. We should be instantly on a conference call. No long PIN number. No. When it asks you for the room number, put in one, two, three, and you should be connected on the conference call. Yep. Yes, I hear you. Hello. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> this is, it's just so easy, it's like a no-brainer. Now, this is a sample script. I'm going to hang up because there's an echo. This is a sample script that comes wow. with VoIP Drupal, totally unedited. You could edit this script to put in a long PIN number if you wanted one, or to put in extra directions or anything that people needed to know before the conference call meeting. Um, it's just amazing. So conference call on the fly is one of the very favorite things that I love about VoIP Drupal. So, as I was saying, there's very simple requirements. Um, the only one I've ever had anyone take an issue with is having curl installed on their server. That was a few years ago. Today, pretty much all server hosts are running curl, and you shouldn't even have to know what it means. <laughs> all right. These are the Drupal modules. As I said, VoIP Drupal is a suite of modules that all work together. You don't have to enable them all. You don't even have to download them all. But the core module, which are down at the bottom, they're all in one package when you download it. You will have VoIP call, the VoIP core, which is in the middle, and the other modules that interact with the VoIP service providers. We'll get to that in a minute. All the ones in green are the modules that have been developed and released. Actually, this slide is a little bit old, so we now have released Call Blast. And that, that is the one I was talking about that allows you to, it would really be helpful in an emergency situation or crowdsourcing, groups going somewhere, whatever. Um, this was created for Drupal 6. It still works with Drupal 6, but most of the modules have been updated to Drupal 7. If you find one that hasn't, I hope you're a developer or you have a friend who is, and uh, you can help us move the project along by jumping in and uh, getting some help 
to help you update the module to Drupal 7. <laughs> so um, this is also on the VoIP Drupal site. So. These are optional modules that work with VoIP Drupal. The CCK module, so you can create fields that interact with VoIP Drupal. Views, a very powerful module that is in core of Drupal 8. And uh, this is just so excellent. You can create different views for your admin screens, your output, um, like the call logs, who called, when did they call, things like that. Uh, next, the VoIP Drupal script UI. That gives you access to the 20 plus sample scripts that come with VoIP Drupal. And you can edit them, you can clone them, and then edit them and make them your own. So it's, it's really a powerful learning tool also. I, I knew nothing about scripting a few years ago when I looked at them. And they're in a language called Dial Plan, which is a very simple language. And it has all the, the human readable text in quotes, so you can see what parts of the script you can switch out and put your own text in. When you download Void Drupal, you only have to enable the minimum of modules. These four will do the basic operations of Void Drupal. So the Void Call, the Core, the Script Samples, and you don't even have to um, enable the script samples. The VoIP Tropo is the carrier that I've used, as I said, because they give you a free developer account. And I really appreciate that. Even though it's 0.0.01 cent per uh, minute, it still is a big benefit. What about the README files? Well, as you know, sometimes they're the last thing a developer gets to, <laughs> the README files. I'm sure we've all been through plenty of applications that, you know, you look at it and you look at the README file and you're like, oh my god, it's only got three lines, what do I do? Well, the README files are getting better and better in Void Drupal because people are taking apart and adding to them, adding some documentation is one of the easiest ways to get into Drupal and learn about what's going on with your favorite module or even with core Drupal. I suggest everyone gets a hand in the documentation. Then you'll also get to put that on your little Drupal.org page, too, that you can to the documentation. All right, here's a sample README text module. And this is, I mean, uh, from the module for VoIP Tropo. This is the module that connects the VoIP Tropo, the Tropo service to VoIP Drupal. And it's a pretty simple README file. It's basic installation and check it, enable it. This is how things work. You have a phone user. They make a call. It goes to the VoIP provider, which has issued you a phone number, which was like the phone number we called in the conference call. The VoIP tro I mean, Tropo issued that number to me. Your call goes from the VoIP provider to the Drupal website, and this is where the magic happens. Of course, as I'm talking, you probably know a VoIP provider could give you all these multitude of services. You could hook it up and have it on your website, any website. The beauty of this is VoIP Drupal works with all of Drupal's powerful back end. We'll get to that in a minute. And it goes from Drupal to the web user. One thing you have to do is set up a VoIP account. And here's the Tropo interface, where I just, you go there, it's free, you set up an account, and then they ask you to create an application. Now, an application is something that they can tie a phone number to, or a bunch of phone numbers, and do all their fancy back-end stuff with. It's like your little own little account. You can have many applications in your account. so. You set up an application. You can choose any name for your application. I usually give it the client's name or the website name that I'm going to be putting this on. And then you have a URL that handles the calls. So that's just your site, VoIP, and whatever uh, VoIP service you have, which we have Tropo, and then Call Handler. 
then let you select a phone, an area to uh, get a phone number from. So you can select a region, and there, it's as it says there, free, free. So the experimenting is really fun, especially when you know you're not. Oh, if I test this, it's going to cost me ten cents every time. <laughs> that gets kind of lazy. Yes. Where are these numbers generated from? Is it just like? Um no, it's from the VoIP provider themselves. There are telephones of VoIP service. provider service. So they are provisioned, you know, tons of phone numbers and they provision them to people, their clients. It's kind of like an internet host reseller. They buy a bunch of uh, IP addresses and then they sell them to you. Counts. Not really. All right. no. so I haven't found time. one. All right. I have not found all right. a limit. So you could host many clients and have them all right. in there. In fact, time to go back. Yes. Now, could you use this like a regular phone number? Like, the reason I'm thinking, this is me thinking out loud. So sure. I'm not a technical person. I'm That's more okay. Of the other hand, business. But I, I know, for example, a lot of black communities, um, the only way they get access to the internet is to this. So that that um, idea of, 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 you know, like they're part of the 1.5 billion. Mm -hmm. So just thinking of that population, is there some other way like to attract them to be on there, like where they don't have to use a miss or something? Well, your website, or is, I guess I'm just kind of confused. Right, for that, you, you wouldn't really use a website. You would just get an, a phone account with a VoIP provider. Okay, and then so then they would be able to like call and all that stuff and not mm -hmm. use their minutes? Because I'm just thinking well, they wouldn't have a smartphone. No, well, they would have the whatever pricing plan the VoIP provider okay. put out. Okay, so then, for them. then it wouldn't be for free. No. For us building the website, it would be. The developer account is yeah. free. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes, but when you put it into production, then it's it starts charging you, and it's as I said, zero point zero one cent per minute or something. I'll show you the pricing page in a second. Competitive, so, right? Hmm. Competitive price, right? Yes, it's very competitive pricing, and uh, yes, I was just going to show you on the uh, back end here where we. We're just showing you the VoIP provider. Under the VoIP Drupal settings, we have the VoIP server configuration. When it comes, it's log only is the default, but we've added the module with Tropo. And you would go in here to configure it. And these entries are all from the provider. They will give you that on their website. As you can see, like here is my live Tropo account. And here's my, I have all of these applications here from different websites. This is the one for Drupal roommates. And of course, I took too long and was logged out. That's security. <laughs> so I'm in my Drupal roommates application. The name of it is Drupal Roommates. It's a development account. The script details is that URL that I showed you and that's in the readme files also. And these are the numbers I've got. Now here it's showing you a monthly cost. This is what it would cost if it was not a developer's account for to have a certain telephone number. There are different prices in different areas. A telephone number costs more. <laughs> So, and some have voice only and don't have text, some countries. So that will be, you know, up to you. So this is just me being ignorant. So if I mm -hmm. have great Wi-Fi where I live and there's a mm -hmm. dead spot, right? I could potentially download this what thing and use it like I would a Google phone. No. No. Okay. So no. this is just like you use it like you would a website, but you're doing it through voice now. You're adding a web. You're adding a phone to your website, so that people can call your website and get information from it. 
it can read a page in your website or they could leave a message or you could have a conference call but it all works with the website okay. it's not a phone the um, unit in your hand so the three dollars that's for person X wants to reach my website has to no the three dollars is to buy a phone number that you put on your website oh, okay. and people call that phone number and then that phone number becomes the website that phone number, yes, is linked to the website and can read the information on it and et cetera, depending on what you've set up in Drupal. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. That's okay. It's not intuitive. <laughs> or I wouldn't be here. No. <laughs> that would be an inbound application. Is there an outbound capability? In other words, to yes, there call is. out through your number using, let's say, a CRM data field to say, this number. Yes, there is. There's a the call blast, and there's also the oh, it's not there. The um, call, it's called um, VoIP call. That's a module part of it. Um, in Drupal six, you can actually add a keypad to your website, and um, just the administrators could use it if you want. You could dial out. Um, we're setting it up to do a call last type situation for our website called Power to Connect, which will um, people can join groups and it will send out a text message when there's an update in the group. So if you're going to call out, say, from your website, is that going to use HTML or something to grab your mic and speakers, or do you give it a phone number and it will connect the two? It's going to use VoIP totally. Okay. It's yeah, there's nothing that connects your mic and speakers other than your basic functionality in your gotcha. computer. However, they it works with other things you use your voice, your mic and uh, camera for. So, alrighty. So all you right. can see I have all these phone numbers, and I've had them for a few years. As I said, Tropa has been really wonderful. Um, here is Power to Connect, where we are using <coughs> this with Drupal setup to allow people to say in the Drupal community we have a thing called BOFs that are at camps and events. It's a birds of a feather where you can form a group organically. Like say three of us in here wanted to talk about CCK or views or something after this and we could just post it here like I want to talk about this, I've heard this and that people can put their phone number in and you can text them a message on where you're going to meet up like I'll be at the coffee shop in 10 minutes you know, something like that and uh, events sometimes have a change you know they change and uh, the momentum can be totally lost if you don't if you're not able to reach people a few minutes before the event so I thought this would be a really wonderful tool especially boffs that you know they happen now you know and it's over so if we go to a list of, say, here's a list of all the different events happening. And these were boffs because we started creating this during DrupalCon. And uh, so we created it around the birds of a feather model. So you would put your phone number in there, and you would subscribe. You would get a text message that says, you, thank you for subscribing to this event. And if you want to unsubscribe, type and it's a three-digit thing. So we're going to be offering this as a service for people and also as a platform. So if you wanted to use this and offer it to your clients, you could do that also. You can, we can also help you host it on your own site. So with that, we've added a phone number. And this is about that URL within your website that handles the calls. As I said, this is in the README files for the VoIP Drupal. You'll notice uh, when you go to the Tropo site to sign up, you'll, you'll be looking for, where's that place where I put the URL? Well, it doesn't show up until you choose a phone number. And then you can put in the URL. It kind of guides you through it. You also get a Skype number, a SIP number, and... Um, we have ported our Skype number over to our VoIP provider now. So 
that works really well. When um, for our company site at Garrick, you can just call the number, and it's our actual Skype number, but it's now hooked up with VoIP Drupal. Yes. Yeah, I'm sorry if I'm asking a million questions. No, please, I love them. Uh, Ask I questions. Are with WeChat, not at like the Chinese side. I've not heard of that. Okay. Okay, I don't know. They could probably port the number, but that always depends between countries. They have different FCC type setups and different rules for phones and, and things like that. So there are some no some. In fact, um, a server called Cuckoo just came out in India that is now providing VoIP service for India, which was not available before like a few months ago, like a, about a, maybe a year ago or so. And uh, that's pretty huge because there's millions of people there, billions of people there with just a regular phone. So if you don't have clean URLs, that's could be a little tricky point if you haven't set I don't know anyone who hasn't but just in case you haven't set clean URLs in your Drupal installation your URL to the call handler will have to contain the question mark and the Q thing so these are tokens that the VoIP provider gives you you have to put those into paste those into your admin in the VoIP Drupal on your website uh, that's it's pretty intuitive and easy. It just gives you a token. You copy and paste it into your little configuration on your website. Then you choose Tropo or whatever VoIP provider you have as the default server. This is what it will look like. So now you've done all the setup on Tropo. And uh, the VoIP providers I've worked with have really good tech support. They'll help you set it up. They know Drupal. They know that a lot of people use um, this interacting with Drupal, so they can talk pretty intelligently and help you through little situations. There's also a great network on VoIP um, Drupal, the Drupal.org users site. You can get some really helpful tips there. And the IRC chat room. For VoIP Drupal. So when you're all done configuring, this is what your configuration looks like. Now let's go to the actual website where this happens. And here. And we'll go to the call configuration. This is the fun part because this is where you choose your scripts. So for your caller ID number, you can put you can have any number in there that you want as long as it is verified by your VoIP carrier. So to do that, you just put it log it into your account there and they would call you or text you and your number is verified. Just so you don't put, you know, be putting your friend's phone number in there and having them Get all these strange calls. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I saw your website. No. <laughs> Alrighty. So, oh, and I forgot. Since we're showing the admin, we're showing the admin things now. All right. <laughs> when you choose a script on your call configuration page, you'll see drop down boxes. These are the pre configured scripts that come with VoIP Drupal. And you can see there's a healthy number of them. Just by the names, you can kind of tell what some of them do. Like you can see, um, David was asking about an inbound script. Yeah, there's a default inbound script for call, for voice and for text. There is a callback script that's pretty cool. You just have a, a text area on your site. Someone can put their number in. The site will call them and give them whatever script you've set it to to give the outbound. Um, so yeah, so that's pretty cool. Like, is that yes, it's this there's so many things you can do with this, it's hard to stay focused. All right, yeah, I'm focused. Right. <laughs> so the me, the voice script record is just like a regular voicemail thing. You know, it's like hello, leave a message. 
Um, anything else? SMS group. You can put people into a group so that text messages will all be sent to that group. And of course, you can have the weather report. We all need that. Very interesting, though, is the last one. Tropo has a speech recognition demo that I haven't had time to play around with yet. That's my next thing. So it basically recognizes speech, turns it to text, and there you go. I mean, Google's gotten pretty good with that, so. Why the hat? What? Why the hat? These are the admin things. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. So you see you have plenty of scripts to choose from. These are the outbound call scripts. Um, they're pretty much listing the same scripts, but you can choose a different one for each of these. Okay, so the inbound script, we were using the conference call, and that's the one we all called in on. Right. You can see in the VoIP call log, these are all the calls. And it's all me. <laughs> all the phone conversation, right? Are these all it's, the list of numbers? Yes. The VoIP call log. Yes, oh, this is the VoIP call log. The list of the numbers, right? Incoming calls. Where would you find a list of numbers? Okay. For the, that would be this. All right. But it's made into a view where I've listed more than the number. So these so caller when we, name. Call. When we call to test you right now, all our numbers are on this list. Yes. Right. And this is in the admin. No users get access to this. And this is basically information coming from Tropo. Directly to the NSA. Yeah. Directly to the NSA. <laughs> and you were this one? No. <laughs> of course. Where, where, where's the data stored? Is it in the MySQL database or the Drupal database? Or where, where right now it's stored in the database. Um, we're making a decision whether it should be, all of it should be in the database or it should be in some of it in flat files. Like especially for the scripts, the uh, cloning and creating new scripts, um, we're deciding whether that should stay in the database as it is now, or if it would be better in no CRM files. type integrations yet. Um, it works with Civi CRM but and Red Hen. Yes. Yes. Is yes. there a module for integrating those? There's not really a module. There's a bunch of GitHub right now, but. It, you know, as people are whipping things into modules as we sleep. Great. So, all right. This is not admin. Anyone can do this. <laughs> this is the location of the VoIP scripts, the sample ones that you can clone and edit. They're not listed in the menu but it is an admin URL, not accessible by an anonymous user. Um, these are what the VoIP script, that's what the page looks, <coughs> looks like. Let me go to that on the real site so that you can actually see what they look like. And I'll go to that on my Power to Connect site. It's just VoIP. You'll see that we have a list of scripts. Um, would you like to see a simple one or a complicated one? Let's see. Simple, I'm usually the other way around, but we'll, we can do that, I guess. Um, OK. Here's the VoIP node basic script. Whoops. And that gives an error because I've protected it. Sorry, I won't be able to show you one of those today. Don't believe. Yeah, oh, there, okay. I just did that one. This is the inbound call script. This is dial plan scripting language, but you can see really how simple it was. If I knew nothing, I would know, oh, I could probably replace welcome to the VoIP Drupal platform with, hi, it's Mickey, hello, and bye-bye with, Ciao for now, or something. So 
the scripts are very well defined and a novice beginner can easily just get in there and make their own word whatever. So, after you play with the scripts, and uh, they kept me up for several nights making new scripts. This is just the basic hello world. This would be an office hotline, like press 3 for support, press 2 for sales. There I am going backwards again. Press 1 for <laughs> the end. <Right. laughs> so, it's, it's pretty intuitive. I, is there anyone here that thinks they couldn't jump in and change that script to say something they want? So there's a voice, um, text to voice creation capabilities working off of that? Those aren't, aren't just yes. important snippets, they're choosing the text and then yes. converting the voice. Yes. It's converting the voice and it does it in several languages, which is a very beautiful thing about it. I suppose you could point that to actual. Recordings? Yes, you can upload recordings to the system, which is probably the most efficient way to do it than pointing to somewhere else where it may not be active or reachable at the time of need. <laughs> so, yes? So I imagine like those languages would be like, you know, Latin based or maybe even Mandarin Chinese. So you want to you see? You want to see the languages? Yeah, but is there a way to play around with that without just, besides just the recording of, of a message? Is there a way to, to, to do a translation? Let's say, for example, I mean, Haiti, for example. Right. And, um, and the site is being 100% Creole. Um, is there a way to, to, to do that? There's a way for you to record your own voice on that the recordings. The whole website. Um, no, with that you would have to work with Drupal's internationalization, Drupal's um, translation modules, the I18N and, and those okay. things to translate the site. And then, yes, the VoIP Drupal could read whatever language was on there. So it won't translate, it just won't pronounce in the foreign language. Exactly. It will pronounce it in yeah. the foreign language. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, that's what the VoIP provider does. They have all that on their end. They have the translation capabilities. They have, hmm, how do you put that? They have all the voices in different languages. You can choose a language. The VoIP system will read whatever is on the page in whatever language it is. Okay. Now, I have not experimented enough with it to know if it will pronounce things correctly, and that's like got me distracted now. I want to run home and try that. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> that is interesting. Um, this is what we did when we first opened. We threw out a three digit number that Alice gave us, one, two, three, and we were able to call and join a conference instantly. So don't have to do that again, but I included it in my slides so that if you want to. Show is someone else. there a point of having a New York City versus a Boston number besides people paying more for longer distance numbers? That's really it. So that if okay. you're a small one-person shop in Tokyo, you could have a presence in New York City gotcha. by phone with without people having to make a long distance call. So it's much more appealing to call and order yeah. something from down the street. Well, most people never probably call the Boston one. I called the New York City one just to be different and see if that would work too. <laughs> it did. It did indeed. Yes, it's it's really an, an incredible system. And the conferences were assigned on the fly, so there were yes. someone in this room said four, five, six versus one, two, three, we would have been in a different room. Yes, if if you dialed four, five, six, yeah. Yeah, so it's yeah. pretty well on the fly. Yes. You know, Actually, I think they're all. Right, so yeah, that's if someone else is using it, we'll say it's busy. Or you'll be added to it. Or, or you would be added to that right. one, yes, if you didn't have security on your script. Yeah. So most people who, you know, high end conferences, they don't want just anyone jumping into the conference. So as I said, that's a very bare bones script that would need you, a programmer, to add some little things around it. And. Right, what do you do when you get stuck? There's a few things that can trip you up. Sometimes when you um, 
get a VoIP number from a provider, it takes a while to get activated. And then you're calling the number from your site, and you're getting a busy tone or you know, some kind of strange sounds, hang ups, no answer. Um, sometimes their provisioning can take up to a half an hour, but it's usually instant, which is really, really excellent. And also you have to make sure that you, whatever VoIP provider you're using, you have to make sure you set it in your default um, server settings so that you are using the right provider. Um, when I was checking out both Twilio and Tropo, I had problems with that. I was calling the Tropo number, but I had the Twilio provider selected in, in my account. I'm going, wow, it's broken. No, but it wasn't. <laughs> it's a good scare, though. Right, and also your tokens that um, Tropo, or the providers issue you, you have to check that, make sure that your Tropo and tokens on this one are accurate. Repaste them if you have to. You can regenerate tokens also, so if it's something's not working, you know it's the token, regenerate it. Like API tokens? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's just like a key. So we've got that. All right, the benefits of this is it, it's really amazing to have a unified communication system for text, email, web, and voice, all integrated in your system. And as I said, there's some reporting tools in it now, but you could build them out as much as you want because um, this VoIP Drupal works with other Drupal modules like actions, triggers, and rules, and scheduling. And it's open source and it's free, which is really wonderful. So um, I think that's it, except for the benefits for administrators. That is, you get a great hat <laughs> when you get Floyd Tri No, you don't get a great hat, but if you're the admin, it's very easy to install. You can pretend it took you all day, but it <laughs> I've done it, managed to install it in 20 minutes. Um, just the basic install and turning it on, and there we have a conference call. Um, it runs as part of the Drupal system itself. As I mentioned before, you could run a fleet of trucks with it and not even see a website, just have a phone number. Um, you're able to access other Drupal features like CCK and views. Works with all the power of Drupal behind it. And it's got all the scripts, the 20 or plus you know, scripts that it came with. Now for developers, so there are any developers in the room? Great. It's got a really incredible API that's well defined. Um, since you guys are here in Boston, you have access to the Civic Media Center where it was born. Um, the issue queue is wonderful. You can ask questions, get pretty instant answers at times. Um, the sample scripts can be easily customized. There's 20 plus modules that already implement the common functionality, so there's no need to reinvent the wheel. It'll, VoIP Drupal will just work with them. And these are some of the modules that are interesting that we didn't play with today, but I just wanted to mention them. Maybe you were wondering what else it did. There's a click to call module. It hasn't been updated to seven yet. But that's the one I told you about. It has a keypad on your website, or it just you can have a field for people to put in their phone number, click, and the and the site will call them with the info that it reads a page through the VoIP node module. You can make any node in your website a VoIP node. Hey, oh, I'm squeezing the thing. <laughs> I hit the trigger. Well, I did say it works with triggers, right? <laughs> So, and we're at the end here. We've come to, I guess, this one. Ways to get involved. What does CCK mean? Content Construction Kit. It allows you to make fields on individual content types. Does that make sense? Okay, a content. Do you know what a content type is in Drupal? So if you had content, you have shoes and you have shirts. Those would be two different content types, or they could be. So on the shoes, you would want to have um, 
heels or flats. You wouldn't want that on the shirts, right? <laughs> Yes. Yes. Different variations of things. Right. Yes. So it allows you to add that. So this allows you to add fields that interact with the phone. Fields on your content types. Ways to get involved. Definitely join groups. Drupal.org. Voip Drupal. Um, play with the sample scripts, download this, install it on your, you know, local even to play with some of the scripts, and then you will have to be online, obviously, to use the, you know, VoIP carrier and stuff like that. There's a sandbox at VoIPDrupal.org. If you don't want to install it, you can go there and log in as on a test account and pretty much play with all the fun inner guts. <laughs> You can post in the issue queue. If you do find any issues, we would love it if you would let us know because this it, it's just such a group effort. Everyone's being really cool about helping to fix things and find them. Um, if you're a developer, create some new modules that interact with VoIP Drupal. That's always welcome. You can contribute code and documentation. Um, it's in GitHub. I put the bit.ly link here that goes to a GitHub search of VoIP Drupal so you can see the different people and projects that they're working on with it now. Suck one down and branch it, <laughs> whatever. Organize meetups in your area, like meetup.com is a great site. I met some of the wonderful people here tonight because of it. And uh, we were at a meetup two nights ago and I said, hey, I'm doing VoIP Drupal. And here they are. So that's that's one great way to get involved. If there's no meetup based on VoIP Drupal or Drupal, whatever you're interested in, start one. People come out of the woodworks, you know. It's amazing. Also help us spread the word, like social media, if you can tweet about it, ask questions. Asking questions is the best way. Um, I work with agaric.com. My name's Mickey, and we're a web development collective of full-time worker owners. We own the company, we work for the company, and I'm also an industry organizer, and I present on ways to form collectives and build stronger networks. So if anyone has questions about that, I'm happy to answer that too. Um, Agaric, my collective, has created Power to Connect. I showed you that site a little bit. It was created for the birds of a feather thing, but can be used in any generalized event setting. It can be customized really easily by pretty much a site builder. You don't have to be a Drupal developer to use this. And it allows you to send text updates for your events. Of course, support goes both ways. Don't be a support vampire. Try to learn a little bit about something and help someone who's coming up either behind you or you can even help a genius who may not have known about this one little thing, you know, th those moments are always great. You know, like you felt like, I don't know anything, and then you can give a key thing that you thought was nothing, and someone can really grow and go from that. So always look at your resource options before seeking help in the forums. Um, stay tuned to uh, groupsdrupal.org, VoIP Drupal, that's our section of Drupal where we post our ideas and fun things that we're doing. And that brings us to the end. Anyone got questions? Yes, Leslie. Yes, um, the Help for OK project in Drupal the moment. Yes. Uh, we did not uh, use Void Drupal at the time. It's come a long way since then. Yes. Uh, if we were to use it now, we're going to create, create a distribution for that, or hopefully. Uh, so if we were to use it now, we have two things. We would want an outbound call mm -hmm. to a, probably a list that either uh, a municipality or something would have a list of phone numbers for people in their area. Yes. So that is possible to a list? To call a list yes. of phone numbers to go down the list? Yes. Okay, perfect. And then uh, call queuing. Also, then maybe inbound calls. I need a ride. I need something like that. Um, so inbound calls to a number from individuals. The issue I think I have is that an admin needs to set this up. So would it be possible to have a main phone number? Maybe the Red Cross sets up a main phone number. I'm just using that as an example. Uh, and then 
you know, we don't want to have to be involved in every single disaster that happens. It's a distribution that, that any, you know, buddy in that situation can pull up the Drupal distribution and use it. Mm -hmm. How would they set up the phone number and the trouble you know, the account and all that? They would have to do the Tropo account, or someone on your end would have to help them do that right, right so now. We're working on an easier way to do that. Okay. So if we had that set up ahead of time, could the person who disaster just come up with the, the number if it was a generic disaster? Yes. Sponsored phone number? Yes. And then they could just come up with the A three-digit number and yell it out the window at 70 miles an hour. Anyone who calls in is right there in the conference. Yes. So you think this is sophisticated enough at this point to use like yes, definitely. Yes. You know, obviously, a huge disaster, a huge amount of people um, cost. I'm wondering, I mean, you said it was only like 0 0.01 cent per call. I'm wondering how that would get paid for in a situation. Um, it would be paid for through the Tropo account. So, so, we'll so Yes, yeah, so if you had an extremely large client who had a lot of volume of calls, I would suggest you set them up their own Tropo account. Or Twilio account. Yes. Closer to one cent calls um, because they've got to pay the connection into the POTS network or whatever the right. calls are. So there is a cost. Let's go see. It's not trivial. Typically, now if it's 0 0.01, 0 even 0 0.1 cent, that's a dramatic decrease from what this has been just very recently. Not let's, good let's look at the tropo Whatever. pricing. It says three cents per minute incoming. If you scroll down, they'll have more details. Yes. And then three cents per minute outgoing. Now, this is just one provider. As I said, there's many. Yeah. Of course, and of course. Then there's enterprise, which you probably get cheaper, but you're getting bigger volume. Yes, yeah. exactly. And some of the uh, VoIP providers are amenable to working with you. I mean, I'm sure if you're doing something for the Red Cross and it's only volumes at certain times, you know, you're not going to have to pay every month, you know, thousands of dollars right. or whatever. And I don't recall which there was somebody from one of those. Yes. There's also crowdfunding for phone numbers, disaster phone numbers, which I'd love to see some some of those coming up. Your shadow looks like a cat. I'm not sure if that's a question or not, but with the hat, if you turn straight well, you the, the projector. Yes, it's, it's the cat. cat. Well, I did consult the cat before I came here. <laughs> Looks like ears. <laughs> cool. So I think that's. Um, this is a question. I just want to comment that. Um, since like something like this, you know, a switch to it, a lot of the people are already paying a lot of money for other tools that are not even working. Right. Well. So it would just be figure out which tool is most effective for what you're trying to do. Right. Switch it out. Exactly. So if they did switch to VoIP service and started using a VoIP phone, they would be able to, when they have a website, use that with their website. Or I could see this being used for very small home businesses, like you know, a daycare. You know, someone's babysitting the neighborhood kids, six of them. Or wouldn't their parents want to get text updates if anything happened? Or, and so a person at home could install a very simple vanilla Drupal site, install the very simple vanilla VoIP Drupal. With their VoIP phone, they have that all hooked up. Does that make sense? And there's other undiscovered things we haven't even gotten into so <laughs> with VoIP Drupal. It's just vast, and it's... Uh, People are thinking of new ideas and creating new things with it all the time. Yes? Did I see that one of the modules allowed you to <coughs> excuse me, um, record like incoming calls mm -hmm. so that you could, for instance, you could put a number on your site and it 
because a lot of times what happens is people, even people with smartphones, will be out somewhere and they'll be browsing the phone on your site and they'll want to call you. you know? yeah. And they'll have the number there so they can just hit the number and have a call and then you don't have to be there to take the call. You can just record whatever message, you know, let them leave a message and then. Yes, exactly. That's what we did at um, DrupalCon. The recorded voice thing on our company website when we came back. We'd forgotten we put it on. When <laughs> we came back, we were oh my god. Because we had just ported our Skype number over to um, Tropo, no, Twilio. And um, so we put it on our business cards. And it was all like happening at once. We're like, oh, is it going to be ready to call people when we hand out the cards? Oh, no. And it all kind of lined up and worked. So yeah, that's definitely doable, just having the number on your website. And what's the difference between like with Drobo I saw it said when you, you, you switch it to, to be in production, then you can't go back and like right. that. But what, is there anything, whether it's a URL or anything like that, like how do they know that you're really still in development? It's a URL. URL base. Your call handler will change. Okay. Yes. Well, thank you very much. Great talk.